You're in there. <clears throat> Alright, I'm gonna double check sound and then we should be good. This is this week's? Yeah. I should have put it out more, shouldn't I? No, I have my computer. I just wanted that article up that we're going to read about. Mm -hmm. So, um. Welcome back. Yeah, all right, we're here. Welcome back. Let's see if the sound works. This is the Italian right. Stallion, if you don't know who this is. Yep. Uh, it's been a while. When's the last time? I think a couple of years ago, maybe? Last Two time. years. Was it yeah. that long? I, yeah. I think so. I think so. If not three. If not yeah. three years ago. Samuel Baiano. 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 <laughs> Did you even say your name right? When Probably not. Yona no. Yona Koski was here. I was like, "How do you actually say your name?" And he was like, "Yonne." Yonne. 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 And I was like, "Okay." Yeah, I would love to say, say it properly. You know, like nobody wants to hear their name said. It's fine. Nobody says my last name often anyway. Yeah. Will you plug this thing in real quick underneath the table? Um, how do you say your last name? Bayano. Bayano. Nope. <laughs> How do you say? Bayano. Bayano. Emphasis on the e. yeah e. Bayano. Iano. Bayano. Huh? Man, that's tough. Emphasis on the <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Tommy Cutler. <laughs> that's where it is. Yeah. Oh, that's All right, great. are you gonna start us off or what? You got the notes. Should have printed out three copies. Wait a sec. Oh, for real? You, you need it? Uh, no. I'm gonna turn We're gonna off. start. Yeah, with the. The you want to start with the uh, whatever you want to do. I'm the gym it. stuff. That's fine. You want to set you want yeah, 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 let's that's go. A good one to start yes. with that. Uh, go I'd, for it. I'd, I'd like to start with the fact that our gym, third in the world, um, 91 Krypton athletes, uh, qualified for quarterfinals, so 25% this year, and yeah, third in the world, first in the US. Um, I think it's something yeah. to really be proud of. Cool. I yeah. did not know that. Mm -mm. First in the yeah. US. That's first, the other two yeah. are uh, Oslo and first gym is Norway, Oslo, and then second gym is Brazil. They I don't know how they uh, signed up their affiliates. They had like six hundred people signed up under that Brazilian affiliate. So I don't know if it's uh, some sort of tricks they played there. They combine multiple locations. Yeah, or not. but either way, so percentage wise, of course, we got them. Um, but uh, even outside of the percentage, we were third uh, overall. And you know, I think that's something really, really, really cool. And it speaks, uh, speaks awesome. volumes about the programming, the community, the gym. Coaches. The coaches, yep. The people. Yep, yep. Yeah, I was, I was like thinking about it, and I didn't even know, like, whoever Dane uh, posted that post from someone else had the yeah. statistics. <laughs> yeah, so well, found it Georgie manually did Georgie it. Georgie did it first. First, yep. just to tell you uh, so that you could maybe mention it. But then Mike Halpin, I'm pretty sure from Known and Unknowable, he came up with a Excel spreadsheet that automatically pulled in all the scores and all the, the people that qualified yeah. and did all of that. So he did it so that you could look up your gym and see exactly how many people made it from your gym. But yeah. So I thought the crazy thing was really we cool. didn't even push people to do the open. Like no. We just, no, I feel like these are just the people that wanted to see this <laughs> yeah. did the open because I'm like, all I say is, hey, the open workout's Friday. You're going to do it anyway. You might as well sign up. Yeah. And it's like a way to easily participate in the event that we're having for three weeks. Absolutely. So yeah. I thought that was kind of yeah, cool. Yeah, I feel like, not like previous a... years we may have pushed it more. We may have pushed for it sure for longer. For sure we have. Yeah. And this year yeah. we were really like, you know, sign up. We encourage people to sign up anytime I coached or got coached by any of our coaches. But, you know, it's just, it's crazy. I feel like we could have even gotten more people if we actively tried, yeah. you know. Definitely. <laughs> Yeah. yeah oh I for think sure participation will definitely go up next year yeah for sure but that's awesome that's awesome um so i guess what i wanted to go through was i found this article i don't know how i came off it across it again but this article is the reason why i'll link it in the podcast too but it's the reason why we have this podcast it's because it's like we're calling back nicole carroll wrote the article and it's like we're just calling back to this same these same principles that they're talking about, like describing what is CrossFit. The article is called The Magic of CrossFit. So that's why I titled the, the podcast that today. Um, I just thought the article was awesome. I'll link it here, but anything that we talk about, if there's something that comes up, if you guys want to chat about it, if you guys got questions, we will answer them on the podcast. And then hopefully at the end, we got a few questions from 
Patreon will cover those too. But um, yeah, I thought I thought the article was great. I don't know if you guys read it. Did you yeah, read it? I read it. Yeah, I got it here, so I was gonna. I'm not gonna read the whole thing, but yeah, if anything right. stood out to y'all, maybe we can we can start with that. Uh, to me, just the idea that Nicole speaks about it, right? She says that uh, she wanted to look fit. She wanted to start working out, but it's crazy how a lot of people get into a CrossFit gym because maybe they're just looking to work out or uh, just look better naked, right? And then they find something else once they start consistently going to the gym and they find something else and they essentially stay because of what they found, not because of what they wanted to get into at first, right? So the byproduct is looking better, feeling fitter, just looking great, um, but they stay because of the community, because of the coaching, because of everything that you find in the affiliate. Yeah, one of the things they said over and over was uh, the sum. The the sum is greater than the parts. Mm -hmm. I just that stuck out to me, and that was why they called it magic. I don't know if you have anything to say about that. Comment on that. Uh, not well, not a ton to that specifically. The the magic part is something that uh, intrigues me a ton. Um, the We've lost some type of mystery or magic in sort of today and today's age. And I'll explain it this way. We have no good storytellers anymore. That's a little bit of extreme. No, none is too, is too extreme we find ourselves constantly telling the same story over and over again. How many times are we going to make Batman? How many times are we going to make the same superhero movie? Um, we've made uh, Beauty and the Beast seven times, right? There's the fairy tale that holds wisdom or the, the magic that is something that like just hides itself in the world and it's there for you to find and magic or mystery is like the only way that explains it. We don't have a lot of those stories anymore. They don't really exist. But for some reason, when I walk into this gym every day, I experience this little taste of magic. And you are you leave and you're like, what just happened to me? While I was in this space that, <laughs> you know, uh, has me feeling some type of way leaving more connected, more grounded, uh, more happy, um, more full, right? I had somehow came into this place and gave some of myself away yesterday while gaining a lot. Like it, it's, it's so wild. And, uh, and I think everybody here feels that, right? And we used to get that from a bunch of different places. Like, uh, just like even like early nineties TV shows, like they're just like, like you have like the nostalgia feeling or like you start looking back on the decades and then you kind of get up to insert uh, the 2000s, you know, insert uh, Y2K and the fear that all of the computers were going to shut down. And then you start fast forwarding. It's like we've lost some type of magic or mystery and replaced it with some type of like knowing, like I, I have to know and it has to be concrete and it can't exist in a space that is what this article is describing. And she does it beautifully. Yeah, it starts too, with that point. It starts yeah. with that point. Like you feel different yeah. when you, like, when you yeah. go into the place or when you leave the place. Mm -hmm. yeah, and you, no, you notice it, especially when you leave. You know, you don't really think about it too much when you're in it. But then once you leave, you're like, whoa, okay. <laughs> I felt really good. That was great. You know, that made my yeah. day better. Yeah. yeah. If I could, if I could just get everyone I love doing this, dot dot dot, that is true. Yeah. the world would be a better place. Very really. Like how many times have we heard yes. that? Yeah. You know, it's like how many times have we said that on this podcast? Yeah. You know, before I've, even reading that, you know I've tried I mean? to get all my relatives and family members to do it. You know? That was what uh, Travis Bajan said in in one of those interviews. Was you know it's good because you would want all of your friends and family mm -hmm. to do it and right. participate in it, and you know that they'd be better for it. Yeah. It's like why don't you do yeah. it? Yeah. Why aren't you doing it? Right. You know, like if you know this is something that's good for you, that you would want your family, friends, loved ones to do, right. why are you participating? Mm -hmm. You know, like there's X, Y, Z reasons that you might not want to, or you might be afraid to, or you might not feel ready for it. But uh, 
this is something that's everybody can participate in. That's the number one point here of what is CrossFit is the methodology. It's like it's universally scalable. Everyone can participate. And that's yeah. what we try to keep in here. That's what one of the things that we hammer home is that anybody can come and do this. I invite many people. I invite everybody. Everybody that I meet, I invite to come to the gym and try a workout. Oh, yeah. Some people take me up on it. Most people don't. Yeah. But that's okay. It's okay. Yeah, this past weekend, I was on like sort of like a, or is it my homie's 40th birthday? And he, it was like 15 dudes went to this lake house and it was supposed to be like a golf weekend or whatever. It rained all weekend. So we just watched, and we just watched basketball all last weekend. And one of the guys was like, hey, what do you, like, where do you go to the gym? And I was like, CrossFit Krypton. Like, oh, I live in the neighborhood right behind it. I've been thinking about going for a while. And I was like, well, say no more. Walk in, yeah. <laughs> sign up for an intro class. There's two classes that you're going to have to participate in before you get thrust into uh, the big classes, I guess, you know, just standard mm -hmm. class, whatever. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and you're, you know, your, your life will change forever. So, you know, it's yeah. like the, I think the statement that I made or something like that, yeah. or you'll thank me later or something like that. And, uh, I haven't seen them yet, but it is the I'm, easiest thing to do. Yeah. I love that she put the Morpheus quote from the matrix. In here. Yeah. What is it again? Unfortunately, no one can be told what the matrix is. You have to go, you have to see it for yourself. You take the red pill and I show you how deep the rabbit hole goes. Remember, all I'm offering is the truth and nothing more. Exactly. Yes, true. Because you got, you know, no matter how many times you're gonna tell someone, a friend or a family member, hey, you have to try, you have to. They they won't realize until they're <laughs> doing it. They're in it. <laughs> so yeah, that's why we try, yeah, like, with words to explain yeah. all of these things. We sit down for yes. hours at a time talking about what is CrossFit, and it's like you have to try it. Yeah, you know, yeah. Glassman said that at the beginning. Very beginning, I remember yeah. watching 2006, 2008 videos, and he was like, I tell people to show up at 5 a.m. at my gym and try yeah. it out. Yeah. And that's what it is. That's why, because he was like, hey, tell me tell, tell me, me what this yeah. consists in this hour. And yeah, because they like, try to describe it. Um, you, and then I started describing it, and it got to a point where I immediately You sound, pivoted. Cra you sound I crazy. I pivoted to come and see. Yeah. Because... I started sounding like an idiot because mm -hmm. I knew we had no idea what I was explaining to him, right. you know, like at all mm -hmm. and the lingo, the jargon, the, you know, right. so anyways, it, yeah. Come and see. It goes back to, yeah, you gotta come and see it. Yeah. One of the things that I think about all the time is when Peterson talks about, George Peterson talks about like life is an adventure. Yeah. This is one of those spaces where it's an adventure. Like you have to look at it like that way. Like I'm embarking on this adventure when I walk into this gym for the first time. And if you're just open to the experiences that come lay themselves in front of you, like the yeah. challenge of the day, the work of the day, yeah, and the coaches and the people, like if you're just open to it and you don't come in and start judging and start trying to analyze and figure this thing out, like if you just go with it, it'll be a crazy cool adventure and you'll see that how much you'll change. Mm. Not just physically, but mentally. In, community, community, yeah. like in a community, in a group of people, you'll make more friends. You know, you'll resonate with the right people and let the right people find you. It's pretty cool. It's pretty special. Yeah. It's magical. Right. But, and then she mentioned it's very rooted in science and it's measurable, repeatable, yes. observable, but it feels like magic. <laughs> and that was, because, that was another great thing. Yeah. Because it says the sum of it is the sum of it greater than yeah. the collection of the parts, um, which still has me stumped. And I'll be thinking about that all week weekend. But yeah, I'm thinking about that too. It's such an interesting statement, but yeah, it is. Anything else from that? I just, yeah. I mean, I want to sit here and just read the article, but it's so good. It's good. I mean, I yeah, just encourage everyone to read it. I agree. Um, here, I'll bring this one up for, uh, so is it the third part of the formula is the coach. The coach is the most critical ingredient. The CrossFit coach brings the methodology and ethos to life. Our coaches are the gold standard. They are not cheerleaders or group fitness trainers. They are not characters on stage. Instead, our coaches display true character through knowing and serving someone else with the goal of helping them achieve their goals. The potency of CrossFit's methodology is only fully expressed in the hands of a great coach. We think our formula as if we think of our formula as an equation, the coach is a force multiplier. They make the whole thing work in practice and they amplify it in impact. 
dude, really, she really good. wrote yeah, really a nice banger yeah. of an <laughs> article here, dude. Every part gets me fired up, but this one gets me fired up most just because of just the nature of what I do in young life and yeah, how right. I approach the world right. and just, but like, I think this is the like approach you have. Like if you can, if you find somewhere in your life to bra- embrace this uh, ethos, mm-hmm. Wherever you are, whatever you're doing, that thing is going to be, it's, that thing is more likely to bring you joy, mm-hmm. peace, patience, those sorts of things, right? And also meaning, purpose. Uh, it's not going to be, uh, you're probably not going to find yourself defining your worth by the uh, paycheck that comes with it or the um, hourly rate that's attached to it Mm -hmm. and that's uh it's hard to quantify how something could do that and i I think that's really spot on because as a coach you know think about how much you can make or break someone's day you know that you're coaching in a class if you're you know if you're not um not encouraging them if you're not present if you're not doing your job at the best of your ability and want them to succeed and do the best that they can. Yeah, like if you place yourself above them. Right. Yeah. Yeah. What would that be like? Right. Exactly. That and that and that person immediately like their experience is impacted immediately, you know. Mm-hmm. So that coach is really really important for the affiliate and for each mm-hmm. class because they have a direct impact on the members experience. 100%. It matters so much. Yeah. So the the formula that you described that she that Nicole said was CrossFit is the methodology plus the ethos, which is the coach in the community. So the ethos being the coach plus the community. Right. But she also described and said that the ethos, they never sat down as HQ together as a group. They never sat down together and said, these are our 10 words that are going to describe us as a company, Mm -hmm. you know, which all the companies do nowadays. Mm -hmm. It's like, you think you have to do it because everybody else does it. It doesn't make any sense. But they said that their ethos just is determined from the methodology. Mm-hmm. From the, the from the correct application of the methodology, the ethos just it, it just comes from it. Yeah. So it is the fruit of the methodology. Yeah. I just thought that was so interesting. And it's amazing that you don't really have to address or define it. You know, it just speaks for itself. Almost. Right. That's really cool. Which is why we talk about so much about programming and the methodology of CrossFit and how it's important. Things like you program for the best and scale for the rest. Yes. Like this. That is huge, right? The things like don't separate your uh, your community into your everyday athletes and your yeah, elite athletes. Yep. You're, what are you doing when you do that? You're producing a different ethos. You're not producing the ethos that CrossFit wanted it to be, that Nicole's talking about CrossFit was intended to be. And then what is she, what else does she say? This doesn't come from the top down. This is a community thing. It takes all of the community, everybody in the, in the gym, all of the gyms in the world to participate in the same methodology, which then will produce the same, I'm going to use a different word instead of ethos, spirit, mm-hmm. right? You produce the same mm-hmm. spirit and then that you can recognize. And when I go to another gym, I recognize the spirit that's mm-hmm. at that gym because it's the same spirit that's at my gym. Yeah. Why? Because we teach the same methodology. We have the same ideas, right? We believe the same things. We're all of one mind. Mm -hmm. Using the language, biblical language, right? Right. This is the same principles. These are the same principles, just at a smaller level, right? So you can take these and work up, work down. But that's why they work. That's why they're true. That's why they're so good. And that's why it's spread like wildfire. And that's why we're losing it, is because we lose one little tweak. Mm -hmm. Because we think we can, and we think we should, and we think we know better produces a whole different spirit thinking of it mechanically yeah right like if you think methodology plus ethos which is coaching community equals crossfit change one little variable in that in that equation the outcome is not crossfit anymore right that's why we're like what is crossfit we don't know we're trying to define it well because it's changed Mm -hmm. when you tweak these little things when you start catering your workouts to i don't know whoever one specific person that's not the pinnacle that's not the person that you're or the CrossFit Games level athlete type person. Yeah. Something like that. I don't know. What do you guys think about that? The the good news, I feel like it's, we we, we have the solution, you know, we, we know what you have to do. 
mm-hmm. and then stick to the methodology and stick to the ethos and the coaching and it will automatically correct itself if you basically focus on that you know yeah which is just getting enough information out there to everyone and to get back onto the same page Mm -hmm. yeah it's gonna um uh, i agree with sam i think that uh of course correction has taken place and you know we were off track for a while and it's not back uh fully uh on track i guess i don't know maybe it's it's on the road back to the main road that is going to take it where it needs to go let's put it that way right um it's hard to diagnose the thing yeah because there's so many factors yeah um you know like a year ago i kept talking about nuance and i said it a hundred times on every podcast we did and it's like so turkey on that i almost made a shirt that said nuance yeah and gave it to her for christmas (laughs) the uh but the intricacy of how to get back to where you're going is hilarious because it is the same thing that just got described here where you had enough people recognizing this start saying it. Yeah. And then enough people started saying it and then enough people started hearing people say it. And then the, the diverted attention came back to the proper thing. And that proper thing is definitely this article. 100%. (laughs) So, like, just post this article every day. Absolutely. And everybody reads it. Yes. Go, yeah. And you go and see that. And then it's like, and even in the midst of that, like, watching your CrossFit career the whole time in its sort of inception and the, and then listening to all the other high level athletes that were doing this professionally um, talk about the, Um, the thing that was hardest about this is the fact that it's really hard to monetize. Like this thing is really hard to monetize um, for the athlete that is right. But I always come back with the, uh, my rebuttal is always something like the NBA paid nobody for the first, you know, 30 years of its inception. Mm -hmm. They made very little money to be professional basketball players. Steph Steph Curry got $500 million contract five years ago it's a hundred years later Mm -hmm. like maybe a little bit of the monetization of this thing uh is just 10 20 30 years away right like for one thing i always think it would be the most advantageous place to throw as much money at as possible from insurance like if i was an insurance company and i wanted to make the most money i would have people buy my insurance and then keep them as healthy as I could. I would pay for their gym. Unless membership. they wanted to make money, that's where they go. You know what like I'm saying? Really looking Bam. For yeah, yeah. Like there are ways to do this and right. nobody's done it. And right. but it's always it just sucks whenever money's the thing that when you, you have to when start you talking chase about. it, yeah. When you chase that yeah. and you don't chase the, the principles in the you don't chase the methodology and the coaches and the community and the serving other people you chase the money it's like things different things happen you're not doing crossfit right you're, you're not participating in something else so the outcome will also be different and so it's and it won't be it'll lose what the magic of crossfit is which then won't make you any money mm-hmm. <laughs> like, mm-hmm. yeah right yeah. like almost like the money is the byproduct yeah, yeah, yeah. Like we exactly. talk about this all the time yeah, yeah. just a regular byproduct right and i'm gonna call out hq too it's like if that's not their focus they're not participating in what the community wants like what we want here, we don't focus on the money month to month or yeah. day to day. Like we focus on the methodology and producing that in the athletes that walk into the gym every day. You know, producing the results that they want, helping them achieve their goals. Yeah. All that other stuff's a side effect. Mm-hmm. So if they're not doing that, if they're focused on bottom line over all other things, then they're not participating in the same thing we are. And then it's not. Then CrossFit is only only exists in the gyms. It exists wherever the methodology is the focus, and other people are the focus. Which that even that statement is biblical in the sense that the ebbs and cycles that exist in the history that's told throughout the Bible is that there's always this remnant left over. Mm-hmm. There's a remnant. Go and look up what the remnant is. And you and have to leave room for it. The remnant revives and then you come back into your full cycle until yeah, yeah, it falls into 
the cycle again and this money thing's going to pop up again in 10 years or 20 years, whatever. And then it's going to do this same cycle and then there's going to be a remnant. And they're going to call back on this, you know, article oh, it has or whatever no it is. Yeah, yeah. It's, so, uh, this still exists. This I mean, we'll go to, I'll go to athlete meetings and that's all these, some people talk about is yeah. they always talk, they all talk about the money. We need more money for these athletes, money for this money. for. I'm like, yeah. You're focused on the wrong thing. You're like, you're, you're, you're like vision is over here when the thing should be that you're looking at should be in this direction. Yeah. It's facing the wrong way. Yeah. Especially think about it, right? Like a lot now, a lot of athletes, because they are separating the competitive side from the community side and the regular, um, gym goers that, uh, do the class every day, separating that you find a lot of athletes that don't own affiliates that don't coach. Mm -hmm. And that automatically, you know, like they don't participate, they don't in, participate CrossFit. in CrossFit. And so they say, hey, well, we got to make money some some other way. Whereas people like you or people that started kind of old school, you know, they opened affiliates, they coached, all of that. So, and you had to worry about money a little bit less, you know, because you were focused on CrossFit and not, not just. I'm going to say that that was also the draw to a lot of those athletes at the time when CrossFit was telling their stories. Yeah. The draw was that they participated in their communities. Mm -hmm. They yeah. were all doing the same thing. It's like they stopped doing it. People stopped doing yeah. that. They stopped participating. In it. Yeah. You need a place like this in your community uh, that does that. And I'm glad that this one exists where I live. Yeah. And, that way. And honestly, how long can you last if you're just training in an empty gym? just with a sole focus of competing and just trying You'll to last either compete. until you reach your goal yeah. or you until get you so <laughs> tired that you fail yeah. over and over until you get to the point where you can't, you just are beat down and yeah. downtrodden and it's so exhausted. You have to just quit on the spot and then you can't come back next year, yeah. which we don't see at all nowadays. Right. Right. That was sarcasm. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> You could only see my face. Yeah. <laughs> I put it out of the frame. Just yeah. It, uh, <laughs> yep. Um, the next? Last point, or one more point on the article. Uh, I want to say bring back 14 Elite Fitness. Don't know yeah. where it went. Yeah. But this is yeah. another callback. Hey, where did the 14 Elite Fitness go? Yeah. Why are we not chasing the, the tip of the spear again? What CrossFit does that? You do that in your gym every day. I agree. Like, and it, it ties back to, yeah programming for the best scanning for the rest and then it ties back to you know how the our our gym had 91 people make the quarterfinals accidentally yeah. accidentally yeah. just because yeah. why why because yeah. those people are fitter yeah then because than, why <laughs> they're doing the right thing right yeah they're doing the right thing the the workouts yeah the programming speaks for itself so but everybody can do that I, every absolutely. gym can do that yes correct yes it's not out of reach. No, no, absolutely. Yeah. Mm -mm. Sorry, I didn't mean to keep interrupting. I mean, and Mainsight, Mainsight is a great example of it, you know? And they have it. It's free. It's there. Yeah. They've had since, what, 2002 or something? So, yeah, it's just, I think. It is a little different. They now. choose. It is a little it, bit different. I think the first web rights have changed. The rights of workouts changed. It's just somewhat different now. I don't know how many times they've changed who writes it, but it's definitely somewhat different now. They seem a little watered down to me. You think so? Yeah. I don't know. I was looking at them before or about the week of the open, and they were still pretty good. No, there were some. They there, no, 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 there were some good ones in there. Don't get me wrong. I'm not saying this one day was bad. Therefore, it's all bad. Mm -hmm. I'm just saying that. You think? Yeah. It's a little watered down, maybe. But I think people at other gyms and owners or coaches actively choose mm -hmm. to down down the programming because they don't want. And I think that's just wrong. We talked about it before. It should be just it should be reaching for the best athletes in your gym. Yeah. It might be different than another gym, right? Absolutely. Like but as soon as, soon as you get an athlete in there that can do XYZ, you should be pushing that. Yeah. And then that programming is set for that person. And if you think if those people think that it is intimidating, I think you're not doing a good job coaching and emphasizing the scaling and the, how important that is. You know? Yeah, there's an information you did, yeah, uh, you're doing yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 For sure. But the forging leap fitness tag, I think it's just so, it was so good. Yeah. And I, I hope that, it's yeah. still around. I don't know. I haven't seen it. Well, I haven't it's seen it in a long time. It yeah, used to it pop was... up like, uh, like at the end of like a recap show or something. Yeah. Like, doom, 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 a forging, forging. It was, yeah, it was like their way of, of just bragging and like 
right. you know, because it, just it, you without, it without doing that. You know, like it was just, hey, this is what it is. Yeah. We just are fitter than all of you. And, and some we people, will show you exactly. Why. Some yeah. people take that out of context and think, oh, then it's only for the elite. No, the the f least fit person in this gym is elite to the rest of the yes. world. Yes, yeah. yes. You know, right. <laughs> so, yeah. Yes, the perspective is very important. Thank you for letting me share that. Inside any CrossFit gym are the one Any CrossFit gym, 100%. Yeah. Yeah. Which is what they're doing. So they're forging elite fitness. Yeah. It should be the thing that, and that should be the thing that other people can grab onto and see, and it should be the attractive, shiny object that gets, you know, news outlets talking about it, magazines 100%. coming into it, companies like Reebok wanting to partner with CrossFit. Like that's what should attract those, that type of money. Yeah. The more attention you attract, the more money you can make, right? So yeah. why are you not pushing the, these things like forging elite fitness? Sharing this story and telling you that your grandma can do it, telling the whole world that your grandma can do it. Right. Go win the CrossFit Games and then, you know, teach your grandfather how to do CrossFit, right. and then have the news show that person doing CrossFit, and then showing you doing CrossFit. And it's the same thing. That's, if you ask me, that's the best thing you could do. Then open a gym and then invite everybody that you know to come to that gym and participate in the same thing that you do. Yeah. You build then you build a community, and then your whole community around you changes. Imagine if you did that. I don't know, 10,000 places around the world. Like, those would be pretty cool spots. I mean, you've changed. All right, so there's this guy, Phil, and you know his story. Uh, this guy got hired to start Young Life in Chesapeake like 20 years ago, and he chose Great Bridge High School to be where he started. And um, one of the places that he got his foot in the door was as like an assistant baseball coach. And so right when he starts, Ben's in high school, and um, – he becomes the like catcher's coach or something mm -hmm. for the baseball team, whatever. Ben doesn't attend Young Life, but knows the Young Life guy. Mm -hmm. Fast forward to yesterday, he texts both of us, hey, I made it to quarterfinals. This dude used to be 50, 60, 70 pounds overweight, not going to the gym, not motivated to uh participate in everything we just described mm -hmm. and then like five or six years ago i was like you know something happened where kes decided he was going to do crossfit you know he's like well you know like ben has inspired me to do this thing like i know somebody who is the best at this thing in the world i'm gonna do it and uh he just made quarterfinals this That's year awesome. and it's down like 50 pounds you know, like fully get, getting after it now, all of the above. And so not only did Ben, like he's like, this guy um, is the only reason that I'm here because he started Young Life in Chesapeake. And then I got hired yeah, like right. 10 years later to come and do what he is already doing mm -hmm. because he had to, had to leave. And I ended up in his backyard too, yeah, that's almost bad. immediately. Yeah. Very, very wild. And so there's some, there's some type of, uh magnetic something going on in it but it's just fun like that individual story and he's like i thought it was 74th percentile but it looks like i'm 75th he's percentile like right on the cut, and line. Right on the cut cool. line and yeah. i think i'm getting in and it's just so fun when you hear somebody getting after it. and that's why the the lowering from 10 percent to 25 i think in the beginning was oh uh, this is a uh, fill in the blank boom mm -hmm. boom boom but when you end up at this story, you're like, ah, I, yeah. I think I, I think I might be, I, yeah, I was miss, I might the, be the actually changes, missing. Right. It was hidden. The mat, there was something magical about mm -hmm. in, including that yeah. other fifteen percent mm -hmm. into this stage mm -hmm. of quarters, right? And granted, it's gonna, it's gonna smack some people, I yeah. think. But or this is a great tie-in this we're, is we're, we're yeah, walk into the yeah, next yeah. One? or this is not going to have 275 pound clean jerks in it because they know that crushed the top 10 percent mm -hmm. last time the bottom 15 aren't even going to get one of those reps yeah they can't do that they, so i don't think they can do that this year so no, it can't so be as yeah. i i was against the changed the change from 10 percent to 25 percent um then eventually it kind of was okay with it but i was against it mainly because it just puts a lot more stress on an emphasis on the programming for quarterfinals because now you really have to be meticulous of yeah. how you program these and it looks like 
news just came out that they're gonna have four workouts over six four. days. Okay. To qualify pretty much from from going from top twenty five percent in yeah. your region, which is like fifteen thousand people yeah. or so, to forty. Yeah. That go to semifinals. Now. Forty people. Forty people. Yeah. Fifteen thousand or forty. Um so that to me just makes the job on CrossFit's part very hard. Uh, doesn't mean it's not doable, but uh, over four, over six days, four workouts. I was hoping it would maybe be five or six. Yeah. Uh, doesn't maybe mean they we'll might have, have several scores. Yeah, maybe we'll have five scores workout with a with an extra. They'll have to have at least five scores. I think they'll have to have five I think so, scores. yeah. Uh, but it's also less videos they have to review. So if they're on their <laughs> side, I think they probably, probably thought that one through. Yeah, I'm thinking of uh, the initial feelings. cut. Yeah. So the the years where <clears throat> you went from the open to regionals and mm-hmm. how big a cut that was, you know, like yeah, that was a. I mean, yeah, massive for sure. That's bigger than this one. That was yes, massive, absolutely. massive. Yeah. So I guess I mean compared to that, if the four workouts, I, I like the format better, right? Because you don't have five weeks where you can do the workouts seven times and each week and you do that and you're stressed out for five weeks if you're a competitive athlete. But in this case, you can still redo them a good amount since it's only four of them over six days. Um, you can do them definitely four times. You can do- <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but I think it, they can still make it happen. Uh, I think if the programming is, if it, let's say it's only four workouts, not five scores, four scores. I think if, one of those scores is something like 17.3 with the chest to bar increase in snatch or 16.2 where you have the double under stoda bar squat cleans where the weights get where heavier, it gets heavier but it's a longer duration where, so it's long, yes separate exactly so you can yep separate yourself with skill with strength uh and overall fitness but it's also accessible because a lot of those started at a lighter weight like 135 or 95. um so something like that if they have one of those uh, and most of those are that format, but maybe one of the, it's with heavier cleans or snatches. And the other one is increasing skill when it comes to, let's say, handstand push-ups. Maybe they're kipping them, they become yep. strict, and they become wall-facing. Yep. So if it's something like that, I think you can still get the top 40. Yeah, there's definitely the right top ways 40. to improve it. Yeah. yeah. But, but you're right. They have to have an ascending ladder. If they have a straight... If it's strength, a straight strength event, I think it's gonna mess it up. I think it's a yeah. big. I think it's usually to go way too much. Yeah, I agree. Way too much. It One out has. of four, twenty five percent would be like a max lift. I don't think they can do it. I, I would expect it to be like with some some emphasis yeah. on work capacity also at the same time. Even even if it's after a workout, I'd still think it skews it because people sandbag the workout like we've seen in the. That's as far before. as they could take it. I think. Yeah. the lift after a workout, but the workout has to be hard, and the lift has to be in a very short window. Yeah, and. And you got to be toast. You, you got to be smoked. So, smoked. <laughs> so yeah, you the really last time good that they did that was the the burpee, the the, the dumbbell front squat, thrust. one to ten front squat burpee. Yeah, there you go. Into a max. Squat. Into the max. It's ten on the one. How is ten on the one? All right. Does yeah. that is that sufficient? I'd say no. Because that year skewed the leaderboard. Now it won't be as bad because it was the open, so you had more people. But right. Still, I'd say no because the, you remember how. No, I remember you like clean 10 three pounds five and you were like a thousand. I mean, I, that's what I, yeah. I would, <laughs> Wait, what? You, yeah. yeah. Well, what I don't, you, remember, I don't what remember, remember what your score. It was bad. I did time a PR not, 385. Yeah. Yeah. I remember that. But my workout, first workout score was lower than no, my no, lift. Than the lift. You know, so it, it but think it about it, right? There are two, like, I'd say in this situation, anytime you go to single modality, it messes it up. Yeah. Two single modality in any any direction, yeah. right? If you had just a score that's a max lift, if you had just a score that's a two K row, if you had just a score that it's a strict handstand push up max row, mm-hmm. I think in this situation it messes it up. In person, yeah. with forty people, I feel like it's fine, but like this, I think it skews it up. If I'm writing the programming, I would in my mind I would think I'm trying to find the forty fittest. Yes. Here's yeah. here's my tests to determine who's the 40 fittest. And I know there's going to be another 40 people that are going to be close. That it depends on what the programming is, whether they're not, they're going to make it or not. Mm -hmm. And what are those things that I need to test out of those 40 so that I get the right top 40, you know, 
yeah. and a heavy lift is definitely one of them. So for me, I put it in a ladder as it ascended yeah. into a workout. I wouldn't put it as a separate, Straight a separate lift. Yeah, yeah. Uh, reward, yeah. That's a great reward structure. Yeah. Right. It's the easiest, it's the simplest one. Mm -hmm. Everybody can do, everybody can everybody do can it up to it. some point. Yeah. The workout stops for most. The only problem is you're doing more work than the other competitors, but you do that if you lift more than them anyway. That's right. It doesn't matter, so sure. that's fine. Um, I would definitely have an ascending skill one, like you said. I would have an ascending skill one where it got harder and finished with something that the best of the best could finish faster yeah. than the rest of the, the, you know, separate, the, rest of the group that separate themselves a bit. Yeah. Uh, also, this is my take from, let's say I'm calling it now, but from what I've understand, understood and the information that I've gotten, they won't have rope climbs or GHDs in individual quarter finals. I know you're happy. I'm not. <laughs> if I got to do this, I don't want to do GHDs. But yeah, yeah. That'd be great. Why not rope climbs? The idea seems like they will have class plans. It'll be more of a class structure. And so 25%, it's a lot of people. It's a lot of gyms. A lot of gyms don't have, fortunately, the ability to have their class run through a workout that has rope climbs because they don't have enough ropes. Mm -hmm. Same thing goes to for GHDs. Mm -hmm. They're definitely fair game. So like they they could definitely be in there. Right, right. But I no, that's a good thought. I like it's it. also not necessary. I agree though. You can still program with like you can still yeah. you have ring muscle ups. You have yeah, you have a bunch of stuff. But just something to think about. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I don't love it, but I still think you can program it really well so that you get the right people to show up for them mm -hmm. without those two movements. I think you could do it by just plucking some of your favorite past open workouts. Yeah. Yeah. I agree. Like, yeah. not the... <clears throat> the harder uh, ones. The ones yes, with a little yes. bit more... The more, like, week three, four, five. Yeah. Yes. Sorry. Yes. Um, I say harder, I'm thinking harder. Uh, everything that you guys have been describing. I'm thinking of that brilliant chipper. The 60, 50, 40, 30, 20. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Can I, yeah. Chipper, it's just like that. That's going to need to be something like that. Yeah, so what do you guys think about this? So I'm thinking of general, the idea of CrossFit in my mind and competing, there's two components to it. I, there might be more. I just, this is what I thought of the last few days. One is just general work capacity, right? Like what you're going to test in something like the first open workout this year, which is dumbbell snatches and burpees. Just rowing and wall balls. Mm -hmm. It's just like yeah. a lot of the stuff they do at the CrossFit Games where you have to carry sandbags or, or run down the field or drag a sled or push a sled or yeah. climb a rope. I don't know. All this stuff seems like just general work capacity stuff where it's more like you know the, the cardio testing side of it. And then the other component is adding in all the skills. So like the one person's comment last time where they said, I look at CrossFit like it's skills. Like it's a skills thing for me. You know, like I do, I do you know, high rocks and powerlifting and then I, I throw in CrossFit for the skills mm. but they're but CrossFit's more than just the skills you know what I mean it's not just those skills it's the ability to do those skills at an incredibly high heart rate with that work capacity like the two things together the yeah. the skills with the high heart rate and that's what you see as it progresses as it goes towards the CrossFit games it starts more basic week one mm. week two and then week three, it's like, all right, they're going to start kicking your butt. And then quarterfinals, it's going to be another step up. And what does that step up mean? It means that you're going to have to do skills and not just skills, but skills at a high work capacity mm -hmm. or a high, a high heart rate or something like that. So you're mm -hmm. going to, they're going to combine those in a way that's taxing to the most, the fittest in the world. But for most people, they'll just get completely stopped there yes. and their feelings will be hurt. Yes. And that's why you have a lot of people that are probably going to be upset about the quarterfinal workouts because that's what they're interesting that's what they're testing that's what they have to test they have to like do all that, of though. those complaints are people are people have such short memories that this used to be the open mm -hmm. like people's feelings really used to be hurt in the open like quick like yeah. starting a workout out with seven muscle ups yeah and some people unders. up yeah, like yeah. real 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 quick i remember watch judging two people in the old gym while they were really crying like that's right they started to work out with seven muscle crying yeah. yeah it was the yeah. Uh, seven muscle 50 wall balls yeah. yeah 
Yeah, of all those. 100 dubs. 100 dubs. 150 dubs. Yeah, 150 dubs. <laughs> yeah, Dude, this, that. like that's the thing. It's like, yeah, you know, it's gonna really stop some people in tracks. I'm like, this used to be the beginning. Mm -hmm. So I'm, I'm really, I'm for, I'm for the three workouts that they program. Even though I hate the first workout, I hate the first workout because I don't train that way. Like I'm never, I will never get a good score, personally, on the first workout. Relative to the, to the. Relative to the rest of the field, is you all have to think about it that way too. You have to think about it relative to the rest of the field. Totally, but and it's just me though. Like I'm, I'm not looking to come in here and get, and get really, really good at doing burpees over a dumbbell. Like I don't like that work capacity doesn't interest me. The workout of the week that we're going to talk about, work capacity mm -hmm. and the ability to smash that workout, matters to me a lot. Mm -hmm. And some for somehow I actively get better at that one. That and have never increased my. It seems like my capacity, my burpee over a dumbbell capacity is just going worse <laughs> the longer that I do this. <laughs> it's not getting better for some reason. Or everybody else is just getting, they fall in love with this thing. And that's the thing that they love the most. And they got, and a lot of people that do cross it have just gotten well, really good lost. at this. They get lost in that. You know, and they get lost and they're just really, you know, 40,000 people were better than me at that workout. Year. It's like well, not I'm what, okay with it, but it also, also speaks to like if at their gym they mainly <clears throat> do work capacity, they don't focus on skills, yeah. they don't focus on weights and all of that. You know, yeah. so it makes sense. They'll yeah, be so lacking in other higher skill class of CrossFit, CrossFit workouts and be really good at yeah. the simple, basic, just put your head down and move. Yeah. Workouts. So it, it, it it depends, but like it's not that you can't do those. No, not right. at all. I mean, it's right. like, and it's, it's just that correct. That was the test, and then exposed certain areas. Yeah, other people were better at that. I totally. fall into the same category. You know, my it's always my strength has always been seeing these things, being able to train specifically for that, and also having enough work capacity to, to win the CrossFit Games. Right. I didn't need to be the best at burpees to win the CrossFit Games. Mm -hmm. I just had to be the best at all of the skills plus. That general work capacity. You had to Those be good enough. That I'm talking yeah. about the general work capacity yeah. plus the skills at the gen with the work capacity yes. combined together. Because then you can kind of show it, and it becomes, you know, once you pass the point, right? For even just in the development of an athlete, there's a point where, like a double under, it's a skill at first. Mm -hmm. Yes. Later yes. on, the double under is not a skill anymore. It's yeah. a work capacity movement. It's a conditioning movement. Yeah. You know. Great point. So, and that's how all the movements are, and that's and that's how all, yeah. There's yeah. gonna be a few. Those are two of our questions actually. At the end, one of them was about that. How do you practice that? Because it's like in the beginning, it is skill development, mm -hmm. and then it works and into it conditioning. But you know, you're getting better as an athlete when you can take that skill and then pair it into a workout that has work capacity and still stay moving and keep you know keep the heart rate yeah. high, keep the keep the work capacity high. You want to do the workout of the week? Let's get it. Oh, yeah. All right. Yeah, I got to do this one with Sam. I came in and I didn't know what I was going to do. And then I saw a bunch of you guys there. there. Like, yeah, let's, uh, let's hop in. Yeah. Uh, do you, yeah. I mean, yeah. Oh, you I'm guys, you guys yeah. got it. I got to watch. Or I did it. I did, <laughs> did it right it, before. I did it before. I did it right before you guys. So I got to watch class. the finish of, mm -hmm. I started when the clock started and you guys started at the 10 minute mark. Yeah. But um, yeah, tell them what it was. So workout of the week. Helen's stepsister. This is why you named it. I guess. Uh, I don't know. That's George, funny. George's yeah. name. Oh, that's fun. I like it. It's great. I, I like it too. So it's three rounds for time, 400 meter run, 21 toes to bar, 12 power snatches at 115 for the guys and 80 for the ladies. Yes. So I wanted to, whenever I'm stumped at home as to what workout I want to do for the class, I'm like, oh man, well, I can't come up with a good workout. No, it's my wife. I can't come up with a good workout. What do I do? Every time, Helen. 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 Like, that's like Helen. her go to workout. Wow. We've done a lot of variation. Yeah. Remember, the we do a lot of variation. A lot of yeah. variation. It's, it's just a classic triplet. Um, yeah. It's one of those that has a high work capacity component, but there's just a little bit of skill. This yeah. one, I just added a little bit more skill into it. Yeah. With, yeah. with the toes to bar and with the uh, the power snatches. Um, so that was the framework from for that workout. 
it's funny that the very next day, Cross the Main site to work out of the day was hell. I noticed that too. Yeah. I that's funny that. how that works sometimes. Yeah. Just on the same that's happened a lot of times. ESPN actually. or something, you know. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I, I like this one. It was fun being able to, to, to go with you guys on this one. But this is one of those where you just got to go out hard and and have to hang on. Yeah, yeah hold on. on. Yeah, yeah you, you go for it. Yeah. 100%. For sure. And you start, you start seeing the separation of that last round for sure. Um, does those the bar become harder, of course, um, and you just got to be fit in order to keep that pace, but yeah, right. it was a really fun one. Um, which part of the workout hurts most for you and which part hurt most for you? The run. Okay. Like the lungs part of it. For me. Yeah. I would say dropping, going from snatches to the run. Yeah. The run. Yeah. All right. So it's the same for all of so, us. Yeah, you do. <laughs> yeah. hundred percent. First run, first run felt great. Yeah. Second run, what I get myself into. Third run, oh no, I'm gonna oh, die. No. Yeah. Okay. Oh no, someone like, called like, ambulance I'm, immediately. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah. no, like my my main goal in life right now is to never lose to 15 year old Haley in the uh, 5 p.m. workouts. I don't think you're doing great at that. I'm I win. I go. It goes back and forth. Yeah, You'd be surprised. Yeah, you'd be good. surprised. I, well, she probably wins two, and I win one. So. But uh, this one, this one, I'm like, oh, classic CrossFit. I got this one, mm -hmm. dude. <laughs> nope. <laughs> no. Just I'm, no, I just am not in like good enough shape right now. Like I, I, I could be in this good shape, but um, the third round just yeah, it round. murdered me. Like it should mm -hmm. if I'm not in shape, and she caught me and. So it's a funny debate that we were having before so this, before the workout. Yeah. You were asking, you were saying what I need to, what you what need to I do need to, do, to yeah. get your best time. Yes. I was thinking, I want to go as hard as I can and see what happens. Yeah. You know, like it was a different, there was a different mindset yeah. in those two. Which um, was brought that the statement came from you talking about going touch and go on the snatches. And I said, for me to get my best time, I'm going to do every one of these snatches as singles and focus on my real hard part of this workout being running as hard as I can and going unbroken on the toes to bar, which is really hard for me personally mm -hmm. to do. Mm -hmm. And, and knowing what doing the touch, the snatches would cause the touch and go would cost. Were you happy with how that strategy were? Yeah. 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 I was, Oh, I mean, I would, I think I would have had, I would have, um, I would have beat uh, everyone except for you and and Ben, and I think Mike Andre. And Mike Andre did Dude, really, Mike, really, really well Mike in this workout too. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, but I would have been right after him, okay. um, like right there. But I just, I, I fell. I mean, legitimately got it punched me right in the and face. Just All of a sudden, just on round three, boom, right in the face after the run. On round three, I got on the bar for the toast to bar. I did nine and w and and fell off because I couldn't hold on anymore. And oh, I wow. thought I'd jump back up and was going to get the next twelve or whatever it was left, and got two mm -hmm. and was like, "Oh no!" Yeah. So for anybody who's experienced like, that, oh no, you want to have that on like the last rep. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Like that's where you want to be on the last rep. If you're yeah. there on like round two out of three, yeah, good. you're in you're not in a good yeah. place. Yeah, because I got 21 and 21 on the first two rounds. So I'm like, oh, I'm finally not bad at Toasted Bar anymore. Wrong. Mm -hmm. Not in the sure. case of going as fast as this workout calls you to go when you're racing your homies or you're mm -hmm. trying to get your best time or trying to beat a sophomore <laughs> girl from Hickory High yeah. School <laughs> in a workout. Like, So recommendations so for people. How would you... The question was, could we do a whiteboard brief for this workout, right? Oh, this, okay. This workout of the day. Yeah. Of the week. So how would you, how would you tell other people to go attack this workout? You know, like I, we would all say this, I think in different ways, which is interesting. I, I know I would start with 100% knowing how hard the run will be for you. If you don't know how hard it is to get out that door and back to the door in a decent amount of time, then. The first one is how do you, how, how do you have athletes attack the run? Yeah. I, I know what I choose. I'd say it depends. It depends on how proficient you are on toast the bar, how heavy is that barbell for you. Uh, right? If if you know that the barbell 
is moderate. Like, let's say you have to do singles. Um, I I would not. Which is okay for this workout. Round, which is okay. Yeah. As long as the yeah. singles aren't like 15 seconds, right. 10, 15 seconds between reps. Right. That's yes. the idea. You yes. have to be able to stay moving. 100. I mean, they, yeah. I think I was like... Otherwise, maybe you're like, going to want to scale the weight. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, yeah, no, no. Keep going. Yeah, no, I'd say the... If, if and let's say you're toast the bar, you're able to do seven in a row, seven at a time, yeah. which is pretty good. Mm -hmm. um, then that's what I would do. I would stay disciplined on your sets and try to really attack the movement parts and then kind of recover on the run in order to not lose time on the toe to bar bend or as much as which yeah. means your first run won't be your hardest run no mm -mm. your first run should feel like you could just it's a run pace that you could just roll into cold yes yes, yes. you know yes. like you feel like it's not a warm up run but you feel like it's you get in you get in from the run and you you feel like you can hop right on to doing something yeah. it has to be that pace yeah. So the way I would address it would be by feel, right? Mm -hmm. So I would talk to I would talk to them on how they would feel. I would try to describe to them this feeling like, hey, you should come in the door ready to go into the next good, movement. Yeah. That's the pace that you need to be. Yeah, shouldn't if you be sprinted the run and then you have to rest thirty seconds before a set of throw bar. Then no, yeah, that's the problem. Yeah. yeah. So the way I look at it is just by feel, and sometimes that's the way I like to approach the workout. That's what I did with this one was I would just want to I just want to swing. Yeah. And then like golf analogy. I just want to swing. I'm going to swing hard. I'm going to swing a full swing. I'm not going to think about my swing as I'm swinging. And then I'm going to make changes the next time. And that's the way I pr approach a lot of workouts. I just go and then I make the changes for the next time I do it. And I kind of store that information and data in my head of how that three rounds felt with those 21 toes to the bar and the 12 snatches and the run repeatedly. And then I noticed that I really fell off on the third round. So that means I went out too hard. So then the next time I go, I have this data to pull from on that workout that I did before. And I know how to modify my start this next time. And I'll then modify the start. And then maybe something other results from it. Something else results from it. And then now I have that data to pull from. And now I know going back, the more experience that I get doing these types of workouts, benchmark, classic CrossFit benchmark workouts, the more I understand myself as an athlete. Yeah. So that's something that I'm thinking about when I'm doing these workouts. I'm not just going. Mm -hmm. maybe the first time I do it, I'm just going, mm -hmm. you know, but I've done so many of these three round workouts. I've done Helen so many times that I know I need to just go out hard on the first run. Otherwise I will not get my best time. If I pace my first run, I will not get my best time. Yeah. I have to hurt. Mm -hmm. And that third round needs to be, it needs to get progressively harder in my head and for my body on the third round, right? Second and third round, mm -hmm. the first round, but the first round needs to be near maximal, like 90%. It can't be, it might even be my fastest round. Yeah. But it, I can't be like pacing it so that my second round's faster than my first and my third round's faster than my second. Just to be clear, that works for you. That's, and, but that's, and that's that, me not personally. That, yeah. that everybody should go out mm -hmm. blazing hot regardless of their proficiency. But I'm also, but I'm saying I'm also okay yeah. if somebody wants to go out to blazing it hot. To see how, and yes, test yes, it. Like, yes, because then, the then you yeah. can learn. Yeah. That's how you swing. You swing your that's golf club. And then you're like, oh, well, let me try this small adjustment with my grip or my hand or my shoulder position or my hips or whatever. And then you swing it again, and then you 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 notice and you adjust, and that's kind of the way that I think about training. That's it's training, it's mm -hmm. practice. Yes, and that's what you do. That's what you should do. So, you know, I I would I would tell people to probably play it a little a little bit more conservative for the first run for sure, but like get in at a pace that you can go on to the next thing. All right, so let's um, go to the next one. Hey class, uh, the next part of this workout is twenty one toes to bar. Can you do twenty one? Raise your hand if you can do twenty one toes to bar in a row. How many people raise their hand? Okay. Do you think you can do that three rounds? All right. Be my guest. Try. You should run a little harder. Yeah. yeah run a little harder. Run a little come harder. in and see if you can get all um, all three rounds at 21. Who's Who's got 10 in a row? You know, whatever it is. And then you start figuring out their, their chipper that they're running for themselves, the game mm -hmm. that is the, chipping away at these 21 for themselves for three rounds to maximize their efficiency at the end of this workout that's scored by a clock right mm -hmm. so i would go back now and i would continue i would try and do 21 again 21 again and then that last round i would probably go 777 mm -hmm. or whatever it is or maybe i'm good enough and i get, i have 21 at the end of whatever it is but when you're telling the the crowd it's like hey you could go 777 here you go 876 whatever you want to do to to get to this place, maybe you're going fives and then you finish on one. Who, who knows, right? Mm -hmm. Six, five, four, three, two, one. 
you know, play the game with yourself. However, you're going to get through this the fastest, you're going to get through the fastest there. And then you're going to do the same thing at the snatches or it's like, yeah, how should the barbell feel? It's like 115 should be 115. Yeah. I mean, it should be something that you can, you know, that even if you're really, really tired, you're still able to do one rep every Seconds. You have the potential to do touch and go. You have you're right. fresh, you yes. could do touch and go fresh, right. That's you what could I would do say. Touch and go. Yeah. And then I would say if you choose to break it up, you're strategically doing that yeah. to try to get the fastest time you can. Yeah. So like that. Yeah. Because I because I don't think that unless like unless you're going unbroken on both sets, twenty one toes of bar and then the twelve snatches, mm. uh you're probably thinking that I'm I'm running hard, like I'm. That's where I'm. That's where I'm making this workout hard because the other all the rest of this I'm breaking up so much that it's not going to be, um, it's not going to be the thing that jacks my heart rate. What do you? How do you all feel about that? You think that's true? With the barbell, it's going to be the thing that the that the regular class goers thinking. I'm gonna go, I'm gonna run hard because I know I'm not getting. I know I'm not going unbroken on these reps and if i try and go unbroken on these reps it's going to jack my heart rate up so much that i'm just i'm gonna have to mm. walk out the door and walk my run or mm. whatever it is mm. but they're not trying to do that because nobody wants to walk their run this is i'm i'm walking us into the ego thing you wrote down which is do you want to get caught walking on your 400 do you want do you just want to even let somebody see you walk and it's like i don't want to let anybody see me walking so i'm probably like i'm sitting on that barbell i'm like i know i can go faster right now but if it causes me to have this to walk a little bit like i don't want to be seen walking i don't know what I look like I don't want, but and that can be motivating sometimes yeah so it's now you're just in this weird you play this game yeah, it's yeah, like yeah, you're yeah. actively playing the game and you're hearing footsteps behind you on the run. You're hearing a little bit of breathing or whatever it is. You went unbroken on your last set of, or no, you you got to like Snatches. ten or yeah, ten Snatches or eleven I or did something. The first first round twelve unbroken. Second round I did seven three two. Third round I did eight two two. Eight two two. Yeah. Oh, and I think Mike Andre went. Mike did I think he went unbroken. Did. Just yeah. grunted it out. Yeah. <clears throat> Should you scale the weight or rest? Uh, not the reps for this one. This isn't a weight. This isn't a workout that you're doing. This isn't a strength workout. Mm -hmm. You know, this is more the intensity is the goal, maximum intensity. So you would scale the weight for sure. Yeah, I'd say as a reference, like you said, like if they were fresh, they should be able to do at least what six to eight touch and go. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. There's a time and place to work on strength, and this isn't it. Mm -hmm. This is more of a, more of a test kind of. Um, yeah. Okay. Yeah, I wouldn't. I wouldn't cut the reps down for this no. workout. At Cool. So the answer to Amanda's question. Uh, Jeff said something. Jeff said something on the Patreon and commented about uh, going there, like you're talking about on that last round, like choosing try going yeah. there into that into that place that you're pushing yourself beyond your limits. Mm -hmm. It has to be voluntary. It has to be a choice. Yeah. Any comments on that? Yeah, for sure. I'm always comment. Yeah. Uh, but that has to be something that you're like consciously choosing to do to test yourself you know to, i say sure. i want to grow so i'm going to go chase this thing this feeling of uh that red line finding the limit and then pushing a little bit beyond it and it might just be at the end of the workout i told him like you can just do that on the last round mm -hmm. you're still gaining from it you do it in the middle of the workout you're done it's exactly. not smart yeah there's a point right so you yeah, say you're at that point in the middle of the workout you know you're gonna just you gotta back most off. likely yeah yeah back off and at the end i feel like if you feel good and you really want to you make a choice at the end right you could let's say that's the last round and you're almost done and you can essentially say hey i can just go a little slower keep cruising i'll still finish or i could be in pain mm -hmm. suffer a little bit more uh but i know i'll be a lot happier with my result and and going to that place so i feel like you got to make that decision i think that decision came almost in the back half of the last run for me. At yes. Least. Like turning around. And yeah. Like, All right, I'm just going to jump on the yeah. bar, just breathe on the toaster bar and then just 
try to send it on the bar. Yeah, it was like rep 12 on the toes of the bar. Yeah, you had to make I, that. I would have almost came down and I oh, said really? no. And, it, <laughs> and I just hung on. Let's go. Yeah. You know. And same thing I, with snatches. Uh, like I wanted to drop at four, but held on until seven or eight mm-hmm. for whatever reason. Yeah. So you, you have to choose that consistently yeah. if you want to. If you want to really find your new, find that new limit, but it takes a lot of learning and knowing yourself, though. You know, yeah, and it's a lot yeah. of experience yeah. and testing that out. Like you said, for sure, they, people go up too yeah, hot in the first round and then they learn. And so, well, um, I was gonna say that uh, for me, I almost choose that. I, I I know this is true. I make that choice before the workout. Really? Like, yeah, I see it and I go, I'm gonna make this hurt, <clears throat> or I see it and I go, I know what, I know what that costs. Like, I know what this workout is going to cost me to make it hurt, whatever it is. I will be satisfied with playing the game and getting a good, a good score without going to that place, which is how I typically work out. Like I, I chose to go to that place on that, that sled push, handstand push up, double under workout this week. Because none of those things, none of those things should stop me from moving. I should walk right up, push that sled. I yeah, should so walk up to say, that wall, yeah. do those handstand pushups. And that's push-ups, where and ego is motivated. Yes. Because you know you're good at handstand One thousand percent. And I was like, So I'm you come going. in and you're like, I'm going to smash this one today. Smash. I and told everyone I was going to smash it. I said, I'm going to smash this. And what happened? You smashed it. Smashed. Right. Just all, just ran through it. Yeah. But. If that had said like ascending toaster bar, I would have walked in and be like, "You guys got this one, uh huh." You know, not gonna make this hurt. Just gonna protect my ego and not yell at my children tonight when I get home. <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna say you want to look at that like it's like you're look at that like you're having fun trying to compete with the people in the class. Yeah. Look at it like it's play. Yeah. Look at it like you're. You're a, you're a kid testing yourself against your friends. Yeah, like that's the way to that's the right way to look at that. Yeah, that challenging it. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Oh yeah, it's that's so where it's fun. motivating. That's where it's helpful. That's why that gym is pretty cool. Yeah, spot's cool. I mean, I'm, hey, props for Mike because he he sent it from the first full round. Yeah. full send. He's sent been good and, too. So yeah. tucked right in behind him. Yeah, yeah. Drafted, drafted behind <laughs> him on the right. I knew I knew I couldn't <laughs> catch him. He was ahead for. <clears throat> Two out of the three rounds, I, I was like, the only way I catch him is on toe bar at the end, and it's gonna hurt. To do it, so. Yeah, that's dope. Yeah, that's, that's cool. the best. That's awesome. That's a like really. But that was fun yeah. too, for sure. I got you. I'm gonna catch you on this one. The hunting part, like yeah, time to hunt. Hunting. Like, and that's what you used to be, be hunted or <laughs> the hunter. You know, I hunter always want to hunt every time. Yeah, I never want to get hunted. I'm, ne- I'm never doing that. But I'll tell you, it's so fun sometimes doing that. Yeah. Like I made the conscious choice, like you said, in some games workouts to be the one that's out in front. And yeah. it's only I've only done it I've only done it a couple of times and it's weird that I took the risk. It's very risky. Yeah. It's very it risky. I I know the one the one workout that <laughs> I I'm actually thinking. crashed and burned on it. So there's you did this on the the run yoke workout. Yep. That's and, the one I was thinking of. Okay. And I failed not failed, but I tripped the last yoke carry yeah. twice, cost me like five spots. Yeah. Yeah. That's why I don't like being out front. Yeah, there you go. It was the first one that I've seen it. Yep. But I went for it. I knew that. You full set. And you could do it too, though. You knew you should have won the workout. Like, that's the thing. It was just unfortunate that the yokes, that was a yoke problem, not a performance problem. That was, but whatever. I knew myself on that workout enough that I knew that I had to go out hard on the first run, like Helen. Yeah. Otherwise, I wouldn't have got my best time. Right. I knew that. So I went out as hard as I could. They didn't really chase me. Yeah. It was fun. I liked it. I remember doing this yeah. like in the workout, yeah, yeah. and I was being chased by everyone. I was like, "This is fun!" Yeah, out of everyone, <laughs> like I was having fun. Yeah, you're not yeah. the one that usually does over the yeah, berm, no. down the yeah, stairs. Yeah, 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 it was fun. Yeah, Alex says that. Alex says he likes running out. when he runs out in front. Yeah, he's faster. Oh, and he's like when he hears footsteps behind him, he gets faster. Let's go, so. dude, dude. That's scary when you yeah. Yeah. That's, that's yeah, yeah. So I thought that's cool. But uh, you want to do these last little questions from Patreon? Yeah, that'd be great. All right, we got a couple. Matthias, we kind of answered Matthias already, but Matthias said, what are some ways you've changed your approach on programming for both classes and competitive training over the years? And I was going to say that I think I've really just gotten uh, smarter and more efficient with programming the right ref schemes and movements together that kind of maximize those two things that we were talking about. One, the basic work capacity, Mm -hmm. and two, the skills that you can add into the work capacity, and then you would just... Uh, modify or scale back.
for certain people that needed to so that they could work on both the skills and the work capacity at the same time. Yeah. So I really think I've just gotten more, uh, the approach hasn't changed. I'm trying to seek out the, the make people the fittest that they can make them. I've just learned more as to what is the best way to do that. Mm -hmm. So like, I've just think I've, I think I just got better with pairing movements and rep schemes together in, in ways that work for the most people. Okay. That, yeah. That's all. I, I can't think of anything that's really changed other than I really like to dabble in different things. Like you'll see it when I post my workouts, old workouts, like you'll see things that are just like completely out there Yeah. because I like trying yeah, random yeah. stuff it, yeah. and, and seeing how it happens yeah. and seeing how it, seeing if there's something that I, something there in that brand new space that I can take back and take with me and carry like all 99% of it might be trash or garbage or like it's a waste of time. Mm -hmm. But if there's 1% in there, I'm going to grab it and I'm going to move on to the next thing. That's, that experience really helps pay off in the long run. Just trying different different things, like experimental with silly workouts and programming. Um, yeah, anything on that? No. But thanks for the question. Yeah. Um, Mark Stevenson, <clears throat> on another podcast, I heard them talking about, quote, training days versus, quote, testing days. I thought this was a good distinction for picking days to go 100%, like JB does, and other days going 50 to 75%. Uh, did slash do you incorporate this mindset in your training? <clears throat> I think you got anything on for that me, yeah. I I like to test workouts that I if I was in a competitive, if I was at a uh, local competition on a Saturday and there was three workouts, whatever it is, and I knew the workouts. I knew I had one that was a full send, like the one that I just described. And the other two had parts of it that their tests, I'm walking into a test and I have to perform my best in the test. But the reason I'm saying I do and train the way that I train is because I want to perform my best on those tests when it's scored against a group of people to try and mitigate the damage that that test could inflict on my <clears throat> end score. Meaning if I know that I can do you know, whatever this workout is and uh, get a 90 on a 90 on the test, whatever it is, rather than a hundred, like I normally would. Yeah. I want to get a 90. I want to be consistent. Me and Ben used to always talk about, and this was, I don't, this is in our notes somewhere or whatever, but um, uh, Pierce Demas, I think is the, the best Olympic weightlifter of all time. And he won four gold medals and he snatched the same thing at each Olympics. What's the weight? Do you know the weight? Snatch 175. 175. 175 kilos every time. Yeah. One gold. And it's like, that's that's what I'm saying. He that's not his personal best. It, it's, it's not, he's not getting a hundred, but he's getting but he's consistent. Just, he, he's just so consistent at hitting 175 where everyone else was just consistent at hitting 174, or whatever it is. And you want to know that thing where it's like, this is all day. I'm going to sit here and then maybe I get a little extra oomph at the end of this so workout. days where you'll, you'll test yourself. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. I wouldn't, <clears throat> yeah, I wouldn't say that you'd probably go hundred percent every day, but I, based on feel, right. Mm -hmm. Some days you feel, and I don't know if I like 50%, maybe it's a little low, maybe even on days that, where you don't feel great. I feel like you could still go probably like 70% or like maybe 80. And then there's days that like Tuesday that, you feel good you want to test yourself and you go close to 100 percent, if not 100 mm -hmm. you know the feeling yeah. thing is such an interesting thing too is that there was a workout the other week that had rowing in it where i was rowing at like a 1450 or something and i always row at a 1200 almost consistently doesn't matter the workout my feel is 1200 watts is the pace mm -hmm. that i'd like to sit on the rower at the other day i was sitting at 1400 just chariot just mm -hmm. loving life like talking singing whatever it was. And I was like, what is happening right now? And it was just one of those, it was just one just weird one of those days. Yeah. And I, the feeling thing matters too. Like it really, it's really matters. What I usually go by. But mm -hmm. what I guess to distill down what you're saying is that you are chasing performance. Yeah. So I, I do think that that's important that you should be, you should be chasing performance in your workouts when you come into the gym. Like you should be trying to get the best score possible. Yeah. yeah. Which means in my mind, to answer this question, training day versus testing day, every single day, every single workout is a test for me. Yes. In there you some go. component, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. 
I write every single workout with a purpose. I don't just do stuff with no purpose. Like, if there's nothing purposeful behind it, I don't do it. Yeah. You, I was arguing with people on Twitter before, but you can't do anything without purpose. There's pr you have to have a purpose for every single thing that you do, and people yeah. believe that you can't have, you can just do things. And I'm like, okay, but that doesn't make any sense. Even you making the statement has a purpose. Like, you're, you're, you're looking for something, yeah. right? There's a purpose for it. But you have to have a purpose in every single workout that you write. And so, like, I might write a workout, and I know that, 400 meter run, 21 toes to bar, 12 snatches. Your test is the 21 toes to bar. Yeah. How do you know you pass the test? Well, you end up with this feeling of I couldn't have gone and if I went any faster, I would have failed these toes to bar. Like mm -hmm. you, you push the feeling, you push the feeling, but you might test like specific components in the workouts. Mm -hmm. You know, so that's kind of my answer. I guess to that. feeling like you've maximized your your results the best that you could, mm -hmm. the best of your abilities. Yeah, and you just have to assess that after the workout. Yeah. Like you have to be honest with mm -hmm. your assessment too yeah. so there's some but there's some like give and take with yourself there you have mm -hmm. to kind of go through but every day there's some sort of test um but it's always training yeah. it's always training like, yeah, you're always training. i love what i love the what you're doing with these two words yeah uh, I'm that's like people so get it. so wrapped up with the fact that it's a test because mm -hmm. they're calling it tests now they're calling them tests uh, i think they're going to go back to events hopefully. yeah probably but whatever but anyways, it's all what you're, you're just training, just training. People are like, should I do this? I don't know if I should do this one. Like, Try it. Yeah. Yes. The yeah. answer is yes. Yeah. Right. Should I do this? Should I do that? Hey, should I break this up into four, 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 or should I do all 12? Like, yeah. 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 Sure. Absolutely. Try it out. Test it out. It's training. So test it. And then you, and then you reassess. And there's a like, little bit that's too you, that, that's how you learn. that, um, you know, I, I don't think I'm living in nostalgia with the girl workouts. I'm glad this board's back up yeah. because I think a lot of these questions that people have um, that are arising are going to be answered by just by trying to get on that board. I can't wait till I think next month we're just going to do girl workouts. Yeah. Just start doing and we're going to dare you like try and get your name on that board and see how you yeah. interpret this question after that yeah. and how you approach your next year's you know days of coming to the gym because there is. Each one of those workouts baited you, sheer carrot on a stick, go as hard as you can from start to finish. Hold, you know, you, hold on, whatever yeah. it is, like 150 wall balls for time. <clears throat> how do you it. do it? Yeah. How, how, what did, do you remember the first time you did it? Oh you remember, yeah. You remember the first time you did it? Yeah. Like I'm, I yeah, vividly remember. You run into a brick wall. <laughs> yeah, like yeah you because just you, run start going, you start going, you start going, you're like, I'm going to do all 150 yeah. <laughs> and then you get to wherever you get and then you pick the ball up again. You get like seven. You're yeah. like, oh, <laughs> no. Yeah. And yeah, all you just that, had yeah. no idea that this could happen to you mm -hmm. like right, like that. Mm -hmm. And you those workouts sort of they gave you a lesson plan yeah. to move you into the space that we're sort of dissecting right now. But and then you do enough of the workouts and you start yeah. to recognize how what that's going to cost. Yeah. And then you're a little hesitant. And then for a few months, you're not really giving it all the gas you should. Mm -hmm. right? And then how do you break through that? You just send it on the workout. Just gotta go. yeah. And then you're like, oh. And you know what does that a lot? The open. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. It just like yeah. revitalizes sure. you. Just like yeah. jump starts you back. You know what I thought back you were going to say? Partner workouts. Partner workouts do that too. And that's why we do so, we do so many partner workouts. Yeah. We do more partner workouts than any gym on planet Earth. Guaranteed. I, yeah, I agree with that. And for that reason, and that's why people are so fit. Sorry. Shout yeah. out to just, just the just the just the <laughs> you know I don't want to be the one that's getting buried or I don't want to hold my partner yeah. down. Just that pure that, that alone. alone. Yeah. If you weren't feeling great or if you weren't feeling like pushing before coming to the gym, and then it's a partner workout, unless you're like sick, sick. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> I yeah. feel like you're gonna you're gonna push and, and <clears throat> get re revitalized. Yeah, just from being a partner. This really fun workout we used to do with Adam for some reason like to do with this I don't know why like but he did you go I go two wall balls two wall balls four wall balls four wall balls six wall balls six wall balls and you go until failure you oh. go until somebody gives up yeah, until you have to until you until you drop the ball and I remember getting to 40 once oh my god with him mm -hmm. that's fun and just and crumbling mm -hmm. like not one couldn't walk for like four <laughs> days, like whatever it was. And it's like, I'm going like, to do that. This, I'm gonna you do put that, that on paper and you're like, no, you shouldn't do that. And then you like get and you walk into the gym and somebody oh, invites boy. you to do it. You're like, yeah, I got you. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, 
I could, I'll sacrifice my legs for four days for this. <laughs> four days. I'm, I think it's got to be more than that. That's yeah. fun. That's fun. It was so nasty, dude. But that, that type is. of motivation is rare. And, yeah, just like yeah. I say, coaches when they when they do the workout, they should uh, they should give their athletes a goal. Mm-hmm. Like the workout, either the workout should give you a goal, or your coach should give you a goal, a mm-hmm. goal for the for that workout. Um, partner workouts give you that motivation. Mm-hmm. Partner workouts drive you and push you yeah. more than you think. It's fun. Yeah. All right. Last question, Chris. Um, <clears throat> what's the best well, we already answered this one but what is the best plan to attack skills that one may not have yet or skills that one may not be efficient at how often should i work should one work on progression of a movement should one pick one skill to work on before moving to another um last part the movements usually translate over to each other so like i can spend six weeks working on my squat and then my deadlift goes up somehow so yeah. like a lot of times the movements do carry over yeah if you do it right if you pick the right movements they carry over well yeah. like i work on my wonder max trick pull up waited for a while yeah you know it's like my ring muscle ups got better uh, yeah that kind of thing so they should carry yeah. over so i think yeah there's a carryover um can you practice more than one in a week i'd say yes especially you know if let's say you need to get better at bar muscle ups a great way is imams you know to mm-hmm. decide just a set that you can do unbroken yeah, yeah. work on uh, recover enough yeah and recover in the minute yep yeah so work on keeping that set unbroken for the whole 10 minutes and then prioritizing technique how getting a really how the movement feel getting to understand how your body body awareness and mm-hmm. how you're moving your body to execute the technique to get you up there yeah in case of a bar muscle so i think those are at least for me that's what i did <laughs> for a while yeah. was practice work on the before after yep just on top of everything but yeah i'd say the order would be get the movement first <laughs> yeah like get the practice it fresh in order to get it like almost yeah. like you would strength work like if a 225 barbell is too heavy for you in a workout it's or if it's too heavy for you it's obviously gonna be too heavy in a workout so mm-hmm. you wouldn't try to lift it in a workout i'm gonna lift it fresh first and as we're just one rep Right. Same thing with your muscle ups, or your handstand push ups. Yes. And then once you get them, you can start putting them into some volume, like an anemone, like you're mm-hmm. talking about. So then I would just do a set or two on the minute or something like that to practice, a rep or two on the minute. And then I would sprinkle them into workouts with movements that don't interfere with it. Yes. So Good like point. a 200 meter jog and then a couple muscle ups. And then I'd rest. So start doing would, that with a little bit higher heart rate. A little bit higher heart rate. Yeah. See higher you, heart rate. Yeah, how you recover from it. And then once you get good enough at those, you would add in a movement that interferes with it. So you might do like uh, a toes to bar before a rope climb. Mm-hmm. Or how about a run yeah. into a set of toes to bar into a rope climb or two. And then you're testing that movement at the highest possible skill level. And then you'd rest and then you do the PT. So that's kind of like the progression yeah. that I would go through in my in my head when I'm writing workouts for yeah. Writing workouts for people. Um, yeah, so hopefully that answered that question. You got anything else before we close it out? No, that's, a good, good. To, that's a good place to end. Yeah. So hopefully we're giving people a little bit more information, right? Rather than just getting on here and yeah, baby. Have, you? having conversations. But mm-hmm. they're, they're good, too. We can sprinkle those in there. Thanks, Sam, for joining us. Yeah, it was fun. Uh, so, yeah, these are good. If you guys have more questions, just go on to my Patreon. You can ask questions or leave them in the comments, and we will get them next Friday. Friday, okay. going Friday next week? Sure. Yeah, so we can do... You got a town or something? Yeah. All right. We're going to do Friday next week. Sounds like a plan. Sweet. Good deal. Thank you, guys. Uh, yeah, Thanks, thank Sam. you. Thank you, Sam.